So now you guys. Of 
Several years ago, the district did have a and it was able to achieve the indicated to two to three months to prepare for the second place. So, I'm Offer whatever President of Hampton I was very disappointed about the planning board last week at their meeting. Um, there was verbal attacks with each other. There was a person who was not calling people out of order. It was really disgraceful. And I just want to come as a resident and tell you how to support your advice. That if the planning board does need some. Training and how to run a meeting and how to answer. The Municipal Association does offer that. So that's all I want to say. I appreciate you letting me come and say that, but I'm um, hoping in the future I will not have to see that again.
of the cart, only one foot off the ground, so it's a much easier step out, grab the cart. For those few times we have that. If it gets to be a problem, we still use two rear pack, rear load uh, trucks during the summer, mm -hmm. and those both have carts on flippers on them. So, what about the grease lines? Uh, no that? automatic greasing. The crews, um, we actually bought them power greasers. Uh -huh. They actually have battery packs on them that they can press a button and it greases the trucks. We found that that's been much more effective okay. and thorough than the um, the cold weather really. And with the old one with the lines breaking, that yeah, was not uh, nice. Yeah, that was a that we've learned our lesson there. That will never occur again. Good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have one question. So for this, so we're not going to be getting the new trucks till December. Right. So for this summer, we'll just be going the way we've been going yeah we'll just continue okay. to repair and, and maintain the fleet that we have yes okay great thank you i have a question this is a multi-year lease right it is a five-year lease with a we expect to get 10 years out of these right. trucks and fred when didn't the new hampshire municipal association have a question on on lease multi-year leases we we phrased the uh, the warrant article in accordance with the statute to allow us to do multi-year leases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We are very careful about that because there is a very specific statute that governs us. Good. And we're only paying one year at a time on the lease. Is that correct? That is correct. And if the town decides not to appropriate the funds, the trucks just get returned. Okay. Good. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Those are all I had, but I noticed there was, was there something else? Do we have, uh, yeah, there was the one additional thing on the vegetation control services for the right. herbicide spraying, which was a contract that was put out. Yeah, we have uh, vegetation control services. It's a, th um, a three-year bid. We did it last year, uh, late 16. It, the contract took effect in 17. Um, it, it is a $20,000 a year annual expense, but it is it was part of the bid process. Uh, I brought forth that um, annual contract renewal, if you will, to uh, the manager, and he recommended that I explain that process to the board. There is a slight modification in the contract, although not a dollar modification. Um, they're going to, we're very successful on the, the sidewalk weed control and they'd like to change the process a little bit where we don't do as much sidewalk control work because we've basically eliminated it, and that they shift gears a little bit and start getting some of this Japanese knotweed, uh, which is creeping in on the sides of the road. In a number of instances, uh, it's cutting down on sight distance. Uh, it's becoming a ha safety hazard. Um, I can know down a wild rose lane, it's I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get calls. Um, so their feeling is that if we slightly modify their action plan, we'll be able to, in a three-year cycle, uh, suppress a good amount of this Japanese knotweed. So that's really the only change to the, to the actual and, contract. And you're just looking for a motion from us for the just extension? Just to reaffirm the contract. Yeah. Okay. Mary Louise, you have a question? question. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you're spraying to kill the weeds. What damage, if any, to the environment? Has there been a study? What are they using? I don't know specifically what they're using. They have to submit every year, and he's already started the process. But um, there's a, through the state government, there's a department that handles uh, controlling and licensing, if you will, all pesticide applicators. Mm -hmm. And he actually has to put together a plan that shows where he's going to apply and what he's actually going to use. So I leave it to those professionals to do the okay. the smart thing, but he, his actions are actually controlled at the state level. Because if the herbicide gets into, you know, when we have rain or if it's running down... I know the they, they don't spray hours before a rainstorm because there's no uh, absorption mm -hmm. by the plants. Um, they can't spray on a really windy day. Oh. Um, there's... there's a number of controls. So there are parameters. Oh, definitely. Because on McCarran Drive, for example, the planning board said they could not use uh, pesticides and all right. that kind of stuff. So right. I'll make the motion. A second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I have one thing I want to bring up under old business while Public Works is still here. Um, in late, I've had I've received some correspondence over the weekend, and I see we have Commissioner Lad just spoke on the topic. 
and also I have some uh, I see five people in the audience that are heavily invested in uh, the beach tourism that we have going on in this town so I would like I really like what Commissioner Ladd had to say I'm not sure whether the rest of the board agrees with me but would that be something that town management could start preparing for while we wait for the analysis to come back. I mean, I know that's very important information that we're waiting to get. I don't doubt that it is at all. But would it be just as far as maybe we could make a motion to allow town management to start the paperwork process so that if we do have to go for a special town meeting, if that is what the evidence that is provided to us in the next four or five or six weeks suggests, that we maybe can have some of the paperwork, a jump start on that? Would that be something that this I'll board I'll make the motion that we do that, but I do will uh, qualify it that we have to take a look at what the um, evidence is. I would, I would think because you should incorporate I don't that think in the people motion. People will vote for it as easily as people think they will. I agree with if you. If there's not clear evidence, mm -hmm. I'll second it. All right. All those. In I have a question. You have a question? Okay. Okay. Um, it appears that. For emergency purposes, an above ground temporary line down 101 can be put into play. Obviously, it will cost money, but so it won't just mean pipes are leaking in the marsh. That could be a temporary solution. That's how they do it everywhere. Right. They As, go through neighborhoods. Right. So that we uh, can work toward the final underground out of the marsh solution. Is that fair? If we have to put an emergency line, then we'll have to, because otherwise we have to shut yeah. the beach down. That's what Her that's that. what Haverhill did a couple of years ago. They yeah. went through the whole town. They yeah. don't ask any questions. They don't ask any permission. They just do it. Well, in this yeah. case, we do need permissions, but yeah, it's, uh, that can be done. But that's an option. Yeah. That, yeah, that aspect option. you've already looked into, right? You yes. have that all in yeah. place. So we, we have, have the we have the. We know we the vendors, we know the cost. The vendor, the cost. And that's been in place since the last time. And right. has been updated yeah. since yeah. that and time. Yeah, and it's been well. updated. The only, additional, since before. the only additional work that I initiated under that is realizing what it takes now to get a use and occupancy agreement with DOT. Mm -hmm. We're working on one for the Liberty Lane sewer uh, process. Um, as late as this afternoon, I had a conversation with the DOT engineer. Uh, they've agreed to come down, he and his boss, and either meet with me Friday or someday next week to start the process for a temporary UNO for the yep. emergency line if we need it, and a permanent UNO for the, re the projected project to relocate the force mains. These precautions have been in place since the previous leak. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I don't want the years. people in Hampton to think they haven't been because they have been. Right. Yep. Right. So no, I our motion is to very prepare for a special town meeting. Is that right? And then while we're waiting for paperwork. the next five or six weeks so, to get so, the results back, so you would have all the paperwork in line. About half done now. He's already been okay. doing okay. it. Okay, I'm just <laughs> asking a question, and then you would uh, submit that as soon after you get the info. After the board reads the information, <clears throat> excuse me, from the analysis uh, from the engineers and the the uh, inspection company and the uh, services company, then you'll make a decision on whether or not you wish to proceed based upon that information. So we will then have the information ready for you at that time, and you'll need to examine it and then vote to pursue with it. That's the motion, and I made it, and someone seconded it. Okay, and we still have to go to court at that point? The statute requires us to go to the Superior Court. Okay. But I just, I just want to make sure that we are stipulating so the public understands your 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 motion is speaking to the the final uh, resolution yes. in the underground lines, but what we are implementing first we already did that last will be the above ground lines. So there won't yeah, we be, gave them permission to get ready for that if we need it. Uh, okay. And actually, in reality, we did it the last time there was a leak. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then I just want to bring something up because we received a bunch of reports from Public Works and one of them was a National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System annual report prepared by Jennifer Hale. Yeah. And she was already saying in that report how this was, you know, we're planning on probably having this up for a 19 funding to ask the town for funding. So, you know, now that we've had another leak in the pipe, 
obviously we, we I think we've been proactive I like to continue being proactive but I just feel that it's a really unique situation and I am very thankful for the motion here made tonight and do we vote on it yet no no can we do a vote on it yes I'm ready all, right, all those in favor unanimous Fred has already been working on this all mm -hmm. I know he has right. but all we it's nice to have the full board support it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fred realizes that. See you next year. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Dream on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> next we have. Uh, you guys don't want to hang around and watch the rest of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our finance director, uh, Christy Pulliam, the monthly financials. Everyone should have received their ouch, their March financials uh, last week, I believe, sometime towards the end of the week, I believe. Yeah. And they were posted on the website and sent out to the budget committee and to each of you. So I will just uh, run through them for you. It's for the month of March, the target is 25%. When you compare the revenue um, from 2017 to 2018, the 2000 Seventeen uh, revenue was higher by seventy-six thousand two hundred forty-seven dollars. The total month's income was four hundred twenty-one thousand nine hundred dollars. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at two hundred eighty-five thousand seven hundred thirty-five. Interest on taxes at twenty-two thousand seven hundred seventy-four. Building permits at thirty-five thousand eight hundred ninety dollars. Departmental income at twenty-four thousand three hundred fifty-one. And the real estate trust at $41,784. On the expense side of things, um, you will find that we are at 24.76% or under budget by $59,036. At first that was a little alarming to me, but then when I did a little further research and Fred and I kind of were bouncing things off of each other, um, it wasn't quite as alarming as it originally had been to us. Usually we're at least in the couple of hundred thousand dollars under budget but um, the first quarter of the year you have a lot of your annual payments for like your computer software and your financial software your maintenance agreements rentals and leases those types of things and you also have we have made the first um, semi-annual payment for hydrants which is almost 500,000 or 250,000 because it's 500 total so when you take those things into consideration it wasn't quite as um, alarming as it originally was so I will just run through here this month um, I've gone through and kind of told everyone where each of the departments stands so I'll just run through those numbers for you guys real quick the executive which is the town manager the budget committee board of selectmen the, that was at that's at 23.99 percent election registration and vital statistics is at 24.34 that's where your town clerk falls financial administration is at 24 percent and i just noted there that that's finance assessing tax collector and mis all fall, fall into the financial administration legal is at 29.65 percent personnel administration is at 29.44 percent and one of the accounts that's running high there is um, employee separation we have some long-time employees leave in January so when they've been here longer they tend to have a more time on the books for their yeah. retirement payout so planning is at 28.79 percent zoning is at 15.52 general government building is at 29.92 cemetery is at 20.91 municipal insurance is at 24.71 Parking administration is at 1.06%. Police department is at 20.56%. The fire department is at 22.27%. Building department is at 21.61%. Emergency management is at 75.72%, but that's a $2,000 budget line, so they have one of their drills, and I think they've actually had two already. They expend almost the entire line, so we do get... Um, revenue on a quarterly basis from the state for the emergency management so even though it has to be posted as revenue it does kind of offset these expenditures 
uh, other services, this is where the hydrants are, it's at 51.97%. Street lighting is at 29.4%. Public works is at 24.9%. Animal control is at 21.7%. Welfare is at 19.29%. Parks and recreation is at 24.9%. Library is at 26.77%. Conservation is at 21.31%. Uh, then when you get to your special revenue funds, the Recreation Fund 24 has a balance of $192,812 with $4,420 being collected from the donations for the beach stickers, which goes towards scholarships in that department. Fund 25, which is the Cable Committee, has a balance of $498,158, but we've just approved, a couple weeks back, you guys approved the um, bid proposals for the new studio, so that will take a chunk of that money out of there, and I think I saw something for it come through for the schools recently, too, so. Fund 26 for private detail is at $136,729. And Fund 27, which is EMS, is at 641784 And I just point out it again there that the ambulance has a purchase order for that their new ambulance. So that fund will drop by 234931 as soon as the ambulance has arrived. Wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018 total $5,586. And the balance in the account is $202,228, with $83,000 um, in expenditures being, have already been approved by the board, but not expended from that fund yet. And that is what I have tonight. Questions, Mary Louise? Yes, I do. Um, Christy, on, the, on page 18 of 20, uh, these are the uh, special money articles and so forth. Yes. Preliminary design downtown. That's about the middle of the list. This was Article 44, I believe. Yep. The $300,000 to beautify the uptown. Um, that was set to sunset at Mar on March 31st. Yes. So what was taken out of that article that represents that 11376? What what did that pay for? I don't have that information on the oh. top of my head. Okay. And I believe there was contracts for in place on March 31st that are coming from that Warren article, correct? That's correct. So the contracts were in place prior to the 31st, so there's more expenditures that will be coming from that Warren article. Oh, okay. Correct, Fred? Okay. That, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. They have to execute the work first. Correct. But the, the contracts were all signed prior to the 31st. Because I think it was kind of a narrow squeak, if I recall. So I was just... <laughs> and one of them actually came in for free. <laughs> yes, that's right. One of the utilities did come in for free. But so more money will be expended from that line because the contracts were signed prior to the 31st. I can... Um, Send you an email tomorrow and let you know what that eleven thousand represents, if you'd like. But that I don't know it off the nice. top of my head. That would be very. And, and do you have an estimated total for the purchase orders that are? I will look into that by. too for those contracts that were signed. Okay. Yeah, I can look at that. Very nice. And on the very last entry on page eighteen of twenty, I just don't want to get um, Chris Munns excited. It says one sly community oh, services. Sky. Oh, you will fix that too. <laughs> you make that one sky. I don't want him to get. A bad reputation. No, it's just a typo. I will fix that, though. <laughs> article 1744. Okay. I will get that to you tomorrow, um, first Thank thing in the morning. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. See, we nice. really do read these things, you know. That's good. Rick, do you have anything? No. Thank you very much You're for welcome. the report. Jim, do you very explanatory. Yeah. Christy. Yes. At what point do you feel comfortable every month? You said, you said that we're currently... Um, Three hundred to five hundred thousand makes me comfortable Make during the month. Yeah. And under three hundred to yeah. five hundred. Okay. And you <laughs> That's like pennies when you on a big budget like this. Three hundred thousand on a twenty-seven million dollar budget isn't a whole lot of money. Okay. So. So you say that fifty-nine though is because of one-time payments. Yeah, we Fred and I quarter. looked. I looked back at it and then I went in and was speaking with Fred and stuff. And a lot of them are like the one-time. And then today I even went a little further and. 
investigated kind of looking at some of the other years that we've had default budgets just to see where we were in those years and we weren't at um, 59,000 but in 2014 we were actually lower by 113 so that's not that much different from 59 and then in 2015 which is well also a default budget we were actually over by 19,000 so I felt much better after I saw that <laughs> okay so very good and you keep a pretty close eye on that during the month we do work. yes okay. excellent thank you thank you Christy I just wanted to say that I, I think it took you a little time this month to get adjusted to your comfort zone, but you're there, and I think you're doing an awesome job, considering they were also on a default budget this year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably maybe accounts for some of the difference, too. So yeah. thanks for your work. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Okay. And next we have the town manager's report. Uh, Chair, um, Public Works has asked me to read the following. Um, as you know, we signed a contract for the construction of the Mill Pond Dam. Yep. And the statutes require us to do certain things in preparation for that. This is one of them. On Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018, beginning at 5.30 p.m., a public informational meeting would be held in the town of Hampton Town Hall, located at 100 Winneconnet Road, Hampton, New Hampshire, to discuss the planned drawdown of the old Mill Pond Dam for the purposes of completing re uh, required repair work. The town plans to temporarily lower the level of the impoundment up to five feet, beginning on or about May 25th. The water will be released gradually through the installation of temporary diversion structures. Incident parties are encouraged to attend the meeting. Questions or comments should be directed to the Department of Public Works, to Jennifer Hale at jhale at town.hampton.nh.us. Town and I'll have to read that again on the 30th because it's required to be read by statute at least twice. Mm. Um, we have a number of items, and I, I, I did check with Public Works today, and, and uh, as I think most everyone knows, construction on Lafayette Road uh, for the sewer line re replacement has begun, began on the 15th. Construction is from 8, uh, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. daily. Uh, the road is going to be bumpy and trenchy. And there will be patches, so please proceed with safe, slow speed through that area. Uh, spring cleanup, the Department of Public Works will conduct the annual spring cleanup, curbside pickup of yard waste, leaves, grass, clippings, pine needles, etc. during the week of the April 23rd through April 27th. Also, uh, and I believe this was announced at the last meeting, they'll be collecting brush yeah. as long as it's separated from the leaves. Yeah. Uh, in separate piles uh, on the side of the road. We will have a vendor coming around and picking that material up. Nothing larger than five inches in diameter, however, because the statute won't allow that. Uh, please register your dog. All dog <laughs> licenses expire April 30th, 2018. Uh, collection of branches and limits. That's at, excuse me, six inch in diameter, nothing larger. Um, Construction has begun on the Tide Mill Bridge with single lane passage controlled by traffic lights. Please use caution. The roadway is now narrowed. Work should be completed around Memorial Day on one side of the bridge with the balance of the work to be completed after the Seafood Festival. Uh -huh. And that's that's pretty important. That's a, it's a, uh, a delicate balance. I know they're trying to keep everything moving down there and they're working very hard at that. The... Uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission is going to hold a public hearing on May 10th, 2018 at the Marston School from 7 to 9 p.m. This, is de this will deal with the proposal for traffic flow and reconstruction of Route 1A at the, and the Hampton Beach Master Plan section update. Please attend. They really want to hear your opinions and, and what you think should be done. <laughs> you sure they really want to hear us? Well, I, they say they want to hear us, so I'm going to accept, accept the fact that they're going to want to hear us. <laughs> okay, thank you, town manager. Does anyone have questions for the town manager? I would like to say that as a member of the Hampton Area Commission, that <clears throat> when we had hearings before, uh, there was really very little input. And <clears throat> the amount of uh, people that came um really uh for down in the main area of the beach was equal
to the amount of people that was had at the north area of the beach, which has been completely left out of this plan. Yeah. And uh, so, and I know a lot of those people are planning on coming. And I encourage the people, even if you have been left out of the plan, you need to come. This is the last chance you get to talk. Uh, at the uh, planning board this week, uh, when I watched the meeting, uh, someone made a comment that, well, maybe we'll be able to fix this problem when they uh, uh, fix the, you know, when they do the overhaul of Ocean Boulevard. And it was brought up by at least, I'm not sure if the same uh, board member, who I believe was the chairman, um, and I don't blame him for saying that it, it's not going to be done in our lifetime. And then somebody else commented that it's not going to be done in our children's lifetime. <laughs> so if you live at the north end of the beach, you need to be there Show up. because you are not being considered. And I will tell you as a person that sat there for several years now that um, the bigger part of what's been considered, the input has been on Facebook. And those people that are on Facebook aren't even necessarily from Hampton, which is fine because they're the ones that come to visit in Hampton Beach. And um, I feel that uh, I know that the number of people on Facebook was a measly 82. So 82 people have uh, uh, commented on Facebook, and that's where the majority of the inf uh, input has come. The other input has come primarily from um, the people that are on the board. And there, there's been an occasional people that come from on the side streets that are some of them concerned about flooding and stuff like that and how the reconstruction of, at one point, it was considered reconstructing Ashworth Avenue. That has been left out. And I will tell you that of all the people, you know, they paid a large amount of money um, to have a, uh, experts come in, and the bigger part of the recommendations for the experts are not in this plan. So everybody that's out there that has anything to contribute, you this is your chance to be an expert and come and say something. I and agree with I you. I think that there's been a big change in the way things are being done there since Nancy Stiles is there. And uh, I know that Nancy Stiles is going to work really hard. And again, when I say what Fran said about uh, it's not going to be done in our lifetime, that's not I don't say that against him because he's reflecting what the reality is. And this is our chance to try to make sure it happens in our lifetime. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Uh, Fred, I'd just like to sure. comment on, you were talking about Lafayette Road yes. and the work that's done there. Yeah. There's been a really good coordination between DPW and the businesses on mm -hmm. Lafayette Road, hasn't there been? There, there yeah. has. And the businesses have been very positive in trying to, the ones that are open at night, on keeping things going and working with DPW. That's true. They're, they're working very hard to, uh, to help those businesses stay open at night so they could continue to make their income and stay in business. And we, I know that Jennifer, who is the key person in charge of that operation over there uh, for Public Works, has been working very, very hard to make sure that all the businesses on Lafayette Road are informed about what's going on. Yeah, and I, and I see them being positive in working with the DPW, too, which I think is really good. It's, it's very good. It's a good working relationship. We need to encourage that and continue it. Mm -hmm. I will also want to say that Fred McMahon is a, um, one of the members of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and he's done a great job there, too. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to add one thing. Um, so I wanted to mirror exactly what Rick says, because I've been talking to people up in the North Beach area, and they wanted to know whether or not this was going to affect them or not. And I don't feel like I have the ability to tell them b until I go and find out. But I, did, I just know based on what I've heard from you. Yeah, well, so the reality of it is, is a motion was made by this board uh, either last year or the year before. It was unanimously approved that they at least bring it to Winnicunit Road. Right. And then there was some movement of going all the way to High Street, but at least Winnicunit Road. That has been dropped out. The whole time we were there in negotiations, I was sat there and told that, you know, at one point they said, well, it's going to be $28,000 to include it, and we really don't know. And they, William Rose, 
gave me in the affirmative that he had the $28,000. At the very end of the uh, problem, you know, at the end of the year, right before we, uh, everything was finished, William Rose says, we don't have the money. Too much time was spent on Ashworth Avenue. And as far as I'm concerned, if too much time was spent on Ashworth Avenue, it was up to William Rose to say, hey, let's cut the time here because we don't have enough money. But instead, they took all of it out north of Boar's Head. And, you know, many people were concerned about the intersection of Ocean Boulevard and Winnicunit Road. That is definitely one of the uh, 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 most dangerous yeah. intersections along with the dangerous. galley hatch and five corners. And I guess you could probably throw in Ocean Boulevard and Church Street. But I would say it's definitely in the top two. And uh, this, people need to uh, be, there needs to be some consideration here. I don't think it's too late. I wouldn't even feel so bad if they would have just done the plan, but they've not even done the plan, as far as I understand it. Okay. So something needs to be done, and this is people's last chance to talk. So May if 10th. If you want it done in your lifetime. May 10th. Or your children's Lots lifetime. School, 7 o'clock. Correct. Okay. Next we have old business. Appointment of David Hamilton to the trustees of the trust fund. I'll make that motion. I'll second, second that. Oh. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, I have one thing. I'm going to bring it up under old business. It's in regards to Aquarian. Um, our next scheduled meeting with Aquarian is June 11th. That's what is tentatively been scheduled uh, through Kyle McMorrin. Yeah. I know the town manager, Welch, is, has prior obligations that he won't be here for that meeting. Sure. And he has gone through the last hydrant's maintenance report provided by Aquarian. Yeah. And I would definitely feel comf more comfortable having the town manager present for our next quarterly meeting with Aquarian. I tentatively sent out an uh, email to Carl, and he said that he wouldn't be available till June 25th if we weren't to have it on the 11th. So before I made any decision, I wanted to ask the board. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's had a chance to review this. I've, I've just looked at it over quickly. But looking at it, definitely I would want to have Fred, uh, Fred present for when we discussed it with Aquarian. So if the board doesn't have a problem waiting till June 25th, or if they would like to try to maybe persuade Aquarian to come in sooner. I'll make the motion to do it on when Fred is here on the 25th. Okay. I'll second it. Second it, and Mary. That's fine. Yeah, I have a comment. <clears throat> Since we're scheduled to pay four hundred and eighty-three thousand one hundred and sixty-two dollars. Actually, more than that. Well, the yeah, rate went up this year. Well, I. Well, that's what's budgeted in in here. You know, for the time being. Yeah. But let's talk. Let's say half a million dollars. That hydrant re report was disgraceful. And I, I didn't am. hit everything. I am not happy. The town is not happy, and we need to, to do that. And I agree Fred needs to be there. I'm in favor of Rick's motion. Okay, so we have a, vote, a motion and a second. All the, do we vote? All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, no. <laughs> I had right. that on my list for tonight Thank to bring you. up, so Rick beat me on that. <laughs> All right. So anyone else have anything under old business? Uh, I think I'll go into new, maybe. Okay, new business. First off, we have SAU 90 cable channel 13 funding request, which I believe finance director was just speaking of. That's correct. They, they did send a letter requesting uh, funding uh, for 2018-19, their fiscal year, uh, which is the next one. Um, and they, they've uh, put in uh, four years' worth of uh, annual costs and four years' worth of capital outlay. I don't know whether the board wants to consider this on, a, on an annual basis or whether they want to earmark those funds so that they're there when, uh, when the need comes up. And we certainly have the funds available to do that with. So, up to, up to the board. You want to earmark them, we'll earmark them. If not, we'll just go with one year. Does the board have a preference? 
Is there a problem what with do you earmarking them? Fred? No, there's no problem with earmarking them. I just okay. just want to know how you feel about it, basically. Okay. Well, we can earmark them. So you're on the cable channel 15. This is for channel 13 for yeah. the SAU. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so Rick made a motion that we earmark I second funds. it. Okay. Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. Can I just say one more thing after I forgot? Sure. Check. <laughs> the other part, besides the Board of Selectmen making an unanimous motion and sent a letter of support to the state. The same thing happened from the Hampton Beach Area Commission. They unanimously uh, made the motion to go all the way to Winnicunnet Road. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, also the total board of the uh, uh, Hampton Area Commission at that time was support of supportive of going all the way to Winnicunnet Road. And I'll tell you, I don't take this lightly because I have been here at this table for 14 years and I have gone to every meeting for 14 years and fought this battle. And to see it just cavalierly pulled off by William Rose I think is an insult to the town of Hampton. I think that the um, the uh, I think that driving on to uh, Ocean Boulevard from Winnicunnet Road is where the people from Hampton go on. And in this plan, they're going to continue with four lanes, two lanes each way on that area all the way to, uh, to Boar's Head. But when you get to Boar's Head, it's going to drop to two lanes. And all that's going to happen is when those two lanes get backed up, it's going to be a parking lot all the way to Winnicunnet Road, if not all the way to High Street. And in the old days, for some reason, I can remember sitting at my house and looking on the 4th of July. You knew that things were really getting rolling when it backed up. In recent years, it hasn't backed up. It hasn't backed up like it used to. And, uh, and I don't know, there must have been some improvements made somewhere. But, and I'm not sure what will happen. But it makes no sense to have in this area four lanes when they could actually, that's the area where they could probably get by with two lanes. Uh, and they could do something with the way the flooding is there just by reconstructing that road. This is the worst section of Ocean Boulevard, mm -hmm. and this is why people have to get out there and say something. A lot of people in this area uh, is not happy with the precinct, and I've got nothing but comp comments about that. There's a big movement to try to have that area of the, of the beach taken out of the precinct. And I think the precinct has to back us up and do something because that is part of the precinct. It is part of the beach. Thank you. I have a quick follow-up to what Rick is saying. Sure. Uh, I don't look at that as just the roadway, Rick. They've, they've got to do something about the, the drainage underneath that road. Well, actually, dra drainage is not supposed to be part of this. This is transportation and parking. but. And for the longest time, they kept saying there's nothing to do with drainage. But in recent months, I've watched them. They are talking about drainage. Finally? So, no, well, there's drainage at the other end of the beach. I know, but where you are, the drainage. with the drainage anywhere else or even the road. The drainage. Or the sidewalks. The drainage is a big clog. The this board then. has made a motion to assume, uh, assume responsibility of the sidewalks. And if they do do the sidewalks down there and they do do the road, the town will be assuming that responsibility. But what about where there's no sidewalks done from Boys Head to, uh, to Winnicunnet Road? There is a big problem here. Oh, I, I agree. I, I think that this really lends itself to what's happening with this complaint with the state, but I'm not going to go there. Yeah. I'm going to wait and see what happens at this meeting on uh, May 10th. Yeah, I'd like to mirror again what Rick said. Anyone that's concerned, anyone that lives from the bridge going to Seabrook all the way down to um, to Agent Highway, if they have any concerns, I would urge them to come to the meeting on May 10th or send a representative from your neighborhood if a bunch of you can't come. But it's very important that everyone is heard. We have a nice invitation from Nancy Stiles. The town manager received it, and it was signed by Nancy Stiles and our selectman, Rick Griffin. And anyone that should attend should accompany us. I think the majority of the board will probably be there as well as the town manager. So please, uh, if you have the time, stop in and yeah, check it out. don't always show up because they were invited before, but I think I Nancy's done an outstanding job here, and I know yeah. the whole board has worked to yeah. try to make this yeah. happen. Hampton Beach Area Commission. Yes, and I would agree. Board.
Okay, number two, we have acceptance of two salt marsh parcels gifted to the Conservation Commission. Uh, chair, under RSA 36A, colon 4, subsection 1, um, gifts may be made to the Conservation Commission of land, and they require um, approval of a local governing body by statute. Uh, these two parcels were gifted um, by the individual who owns them and, and uh, the marshal, basically. Yeah. Uh, the, the recommendation is for the Board of Selectmen to approve that gift because it goes along with a vote of prior vote of the town meeting to accept, accept such policy, such prop properties when offered. <laughs> I'll okay. so move, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Very, very nice Favor. thing to do. Yes. Unanimous. I would agree. And we have number three, add to all fire lane designations, no parking and tow zone. Madam Chairman, we have periodically we receive complaints that we have folks who are parking in, to, in uh, fire lanes. So mm. in order to <laughs> solve that problem, we have to at least have the enforcement power. And if we add the uh, no parking and tow zone to all the fire lanes, then in fact we have enforcement power to stop people from doing that. Not that we're going to rush out and tow people, but <laughs> at least we have the right to put a ticket on and tell them that we're going to tow them if they continue to park there. So do we need to do that tonight? Yes, sir. That I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. And I have one question, actually, that I forgot to bring up earlier. There's always got to be one. I know. Just one. It's an easy one. On the resident stickers, I think you guys talked about them when I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. You know how we have to put them in the new spot now? It's in the upper left corner. The upper left hand corner, yes. If someone has a problem based on their vehicle, is there any other possible... What do you mean? Not unless you change the ordinance. What do you mean upper left? The, the, it new, goes in the, the upper registration left sticker. The registration it, sticker has been moved by the state to the lower left corner. They just moved it to the upper. I just had my car inspected in December. It's supposed to put it in the lower left-hand corner of your, of your window. Well, it's in the top. Well, they put it in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> They, they can switch it. Well, I haven't, back, been, I can, haven't been arrested yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so if you don't want to put it in the upper left-hand corner, you're well, just technically you? not abiding. You're not well, you're subject to a fine. Okay. You won't be able to use a transfer station if you go. The, the, if it's not in the left-hand side of the window, the yeah. front window, yeah. the operators of the transfer station can't see it when you come in. Okay. In some cases, people put it in the back window, right, put yeah. it in the window on the other side of the car, and so on and so forth, and we told the employees. So it's got to be around. on that left-hand side of the windshield. Yeah, it does. So when you pull it's up, up there in the left-hand corner where they put the sometimes a lot of places to change your oil, put a sticker up there too. Right. Okay. No, Shouldn't be goodness. a problem with vision up there. If there's a problem with vision, then your windshield can't be much more than this. Much more than a foot high. And, and, you know, that shouldn't be a problem with that location. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have more under new business when you have a minute. Okay, Mary Louise. I have several things under new business. I would like to have uh, an appointment on our schedule for us to discuss with the manager and uh, town council the appointment of a code enforcement officer. I've been talking to the chairman of the planning board, and he said it's not the planning board's responsibility. It should be somebody's responsibility and we are having problems like the Second Street and Ocean Boulevard uh, difficulty. And we can't expect the police chief to run around and ticket everything that's parked in the wrong place down there. So I think at this point we should at least um, consider uh, sitting down for a serious discussion on exactly what a code enforcement officer could bring to the community. Um, there's no sense in having neighborhoods all sitting out there fighting. Number two, I'm asking that Chief Ayotte be invited into one of our fairly soon meetings uh, to talk about the turnout gear. I do have the list that was provided to me. I want uh, to us to have a discussion with him, uh, the um, men and women of the Hampton Fire Department deserve the best protection they can get. And I want to uh, delve into that turnout gear issue a little more. 
Number three, I would request also that we as a board consider a joint meeting with the Hampton Planning Board. I think there are a lot of issues that we could discuss and see if we can reach some type of accommodation uh, in things like impact fees and other uh, interests that impact uh, or have to do with both boards. Um, the Aquarian, thank you because you've already brought that up and I had that on my list. And I think that will do it. All right, thank you. I just respond to the mm -hmm. Chief Ayotte in. I think we ought to stick with the chain of command, and I think the town manager Oops. should deal with the chief first, and then if the town manager feels that there's a problem there, bring it to the board. That's my feeling. Well, Fred's already. Have you talked with him? I, I have talked to the chief yeah. and, and the uh, the number of uniforms, excuse me, the uh, operational uniforms that they, use, they wear at fires and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number that expire on December 31st of this year. And I'm told they will be replaced by December 30th. So, so it's yes. in the process. If not, then, then something else has to happen, and uh, it will. Right. And so we, we don't need to have the chief fit. I mean, if the chief's in the process of doing this. So he is. Then why, do, why so should we have him in? And when does he come for his regular meeting anyway? Uh, another month. Uh, not, uh, no, two months, I believe. Um, he, he comes quarterly, and I believe it's two months from now he comes in for his meeting. Two. If I may clarify a little bit here, each um, off, each firefighter <coughs> is supposed to have two sets of turnout gear. There are some secondary sets, one, two, three, four, five, as many as nine that do not have second sets. Um, Mary Louise, so I think, I think we need to. Uh, I, I something that that relates to the safety of the men and women who go out there and risk their lives for us, and it's an issue that I'm concerned about. Why I, I wanted to bring it up. Talk with them. Yeah, I 1,000 percent agree. But I think, and I've talked also to uh, several of the fire officers. I think that since Chief Ayotte has come on, he has been replacing them, and I know there are a bunch expiring this year. And Fred, I think the town manager just said that the ones that will be expiring are uh, planned for getting replaced. So I think as long as we're staying on top of it. Go talk with them, and then if you're still not happy, then we'll... If, if the board wants to have two complete... Turnout sets. Cer certified sets of turnout gear, you yep. need to give me $250,000. Yep. And put it in the Because budget. it's not in the Next budget. Year. And every time we've tried to put it in the budget, it's been refused. So we'll go to try to put it in the budget this coming year. And but it should happens. have been ongoing. When, and I grant you when uh, an employee leaves or retires, uh, their outfit probably doesn't fit one of the other firefighters, so they have to get a new one. Uh, I remember seeing about that little town in Maine where they took all the firefighters off duty and had uh, adjacent towns respond because their gear was more than 10 years old. Well, it sounds this like for $250,000 we have to put it in the budget. This is a matter of life safety. Well, yes, it probably should have been. I, I think the town manager is dealing with it. And I, yeah, I think so, too. I think I think, I think it, I definitely it's agree. managing if we are. That Fire is. Chief's due May 7th. There we go. Perfect. May 7th. That's not that long from now. Right. Though. And as far as what you brought up on the planning board, I know Mark just sent this out this afternoon, so I'm not sure, but he did send correspondence to all of us about what Mary Louise has brought up with the... About having a joint meeting? Yeah. yeah. So, so what is it say? Why don't you read it? Okay. It's, yeah. Okay. Sure. I, I discussed it with Mark this morning. There are several important issues with the planning board that I believe, after speaking with Fred and Jason Bashan, would benefit from a direct dialogue between the Board of Selectmen and the planning board. Number one, expanded use of impact fees and an annual meeting warrant article to fund the necessary data study for the same. Number two, an annual meeting warrant article to fund a code enforcement officer or imposition of inspection costs on applicants. Number three, an annual meeting warrant article to fund updated update of master plans. Number four, bonding or other security for drainage infrastructure. And number five, off-site improvements. Which I have the town manager expand for me on a little bit this morning. But that's just basically if a new development goes up, that if something has to be yep. done to a road 
or town infrastructure that would be taken into consideration. Now, we restored those meetings in May that pre previously weren't in, on this calendar. Why don't we take one of those meetings and have this meeting sometime in May before all these people get busy in the summertime? That right. sounds like a good, good idea. idea. Yep. You know, because it's a, a lot of people that are there. Uh, you know, a lot of them right. They got the businesses during, will be going. Yeah. Busy. So, if we could take one of the meetings in May and um, uh, devote it strictly to that, I think it would be a good idea. We'll have to work it out because there was a statutory requirement for calling that meeting. Okay. And I asked council to work that out today so that we, everything will be in order. Well, it has to be the first uh, week in June. That's okay, too. Well, we just don't want to do it on one of your board meeting nights on one of their board meeting nights. Mm -hmm. That has to be a meeting of convenience. Yeah. yeah. Or so. you could do it on Monday night. Usually we've, we're having four meetings this uh, May, which yeah. we, last year we only had two. Right. So <laughs> it could be on a Monday. We can squeeze in someplace during the month of May. No question yes. about it. Then if that's yeah. the case, just do it. it this is an okay. important thing. Excellent. And there could be better things achieved here than what we usually do on a Monday night. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Anyone else have anything for new business? All right. Um, since you read the well, what started as a confidential memo um, allowed, is it no longer considered confidential? I would say so, yeah, we just made it public, right? Well, I don't think that in the form that it should be shared. Well, you just read it. That's why I'm like, I didn't know it was confidential. <laughs> well, it's stamped. It doesn't right. matter. That's Life exactly what well, everything confidential. That's right, right. exactly. That's what we should be doing. Right. That's, that's what people well, want to hear. <clears throat> so it needs to happen. It came from the board, it's not confidential. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, Max? <laughs> All right, any closing comments? <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn at 809. Second. All right, all those in favor? Excellent. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. You know, what we, we've not done is we need to do...